This is the first segment in a series of videos on automating Photoshop with Actions. Actions are a handy tool for recording a number of steps and then playing them back later. When you have a number of steps that you do over and over again with photographs, whether they be sharpening photographs or doing something like applying a sepia tint or something like that, it's handy to be able to record those steps and play them back later. That way you don't have to go through and do it all manually all over again each time you want to apply the same effect to a different photograph. That way you don't have to enter them all manually each time you want to apply the same effect to a different photograph. Now actions are stored inside of action sets. You can think of an action set as sort of like a folder on your hard drive, except really it's inside memory, it's inside Photoshop. Loading an action set into Photoshop is easy. You just go up here to the flyout menu and there's an option down here for load actions. Click on this, it'll open up dialog, and let's just go ahead and let's load this action that's waiting for us here, TLR sepia tint. Double click on that, and there it is in Photoshop. It's ready to use. This is an action set. You can see it's even got a little folder icon here, let you know that there are steps hiding inside this. To see those steps, just click that little triangle. That will actually open up the actions that are inside this action set. Now, the actions themselves have steps. And if we open up, for example, apply sepia tint here, we see the steps that are inside this action, apply sepia tint, which is inside this action set, TLR sepia tint. This photograph isn't really ready to apply a sepia tint to it yet. My action sets generally do one thing at a time. And so if I want to convert to black and white, I would do that separately. And there is actually a TLR black and white conversion action set that's available for download. So inside apply sepia tint, there is no action for doing the black and white conversion. So in order to do that, let's actually go up here and let's open up a different action set, one that comes with Photoshop. You're sure to have this one on your computer unless you've deleted it by accident. It's called Default Actions. And underneath there, they actually have a sepia toning action inside this action set. So let's go ahead, let's open it up and let's look at the steps. First thing it does, it makes a snapshot, makes a layer, makes a copy of the photograph into that layer, desaturates it. That's the way of doing black and white conversion here. Not generally the best way to do black and white conversion, but for our example here, it's quick, it's easy, and it works. And then the real action that's being done here to make the sepia tint is done underneath this make statement here. This step here is where they are actually using a hue saturation layer to go ahead and make the sepia tint. So let's go ahead, let's run this action. All you have to do to run an action is click on it, make sure it's highlighted, and then go down here and press on this little icon down here for place selection. Click on this, the action will run through the steps, and there we have it. Let's go ahead, close the palette a moment. Not my favorite sepia tint, but it's a quick, easy example of how to run an action. Let's go ahead, let's open up the layer palette again. Now if you want to see what the actual commands are that were run, here they are again. You've got make snapshot, make layer, merge visible, desaturate, and then the actual statement that did all the work, the adjustment layer here for hue, saturation, and brightness, HSB layer right here and these were the settings that were used. Now what if you want to walk through the steps individually? Rather than run all the steps in an action, you want to run just one or two steps in the action. Here Photoshop gets a little clumsy. There is no button that you can click to single step through an action. I wish there was. And when I say it gets a little clumsy, what I mean by it being a little clumsy is that there is a way that we can step through the individual steps in the action, but what's going to happen is every step that we do that on if there's a dialogue associated with it, Photoshop's going to open it up. Because what's going to happen is Photoshop's going to think that we want to change the settings. Now let's go ahead and let's single step through this action so I can show you exactly what happens in Photoshop as you try to do this. So the first step here is make layer. Let's go ahead and click on that. There's the dialogue. We can name it whatever we want to name it. By default, it's going to be called layer 2 here. What I do is just click OK. Next step we want to run, merge visible. There's no dialogue associated with that. All it did was take our new layer, take the existing photograph, all the visible layers underneath, and stamp it into there. So it didn't open up any dialog for us. Next step, add noise. The add noise filter does have a dialog with it, so Photoshop's going to pop it open here whether we want to or not. And click OK. And then the last step in this action, set current layer, just renaming the layer. So you can single step through an action, but if you come from a programming environment, something like Microsoft Visual Studio or something like that, where a program editor will let you walk through the individual steps in a program in order to test it out. There's nothing like that in Photoshop. You can manually click on each of the action steps, but when you do, if there's a dialogue associated with it, it's going to open up. That's all there is to loading and running an action in Photoshop. I'm Glenn Mitchell from thelightsright.com. Cheers.